which is uh, Baba Kloni from University of Teo Delft, and he's going to present uh, Bayesian personal, personalized ranking with multi-channel user feedback. And this is joint work with uh, Roberto Pagano, uh, Martha Larson, and Al Alan Hangelik. And it's a short paper. Okay, um, can you hear me? Okay, seems. Okay, um, thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Bob Akloni from Delft University of Technology, and this work was done together with my colleague from uh, Politecnico di Milano and uh, Radboud University of Nijmegen. So the main motivation behind this work is uh, the fact that uh, in recommender systems, uh, user feedback can be collected through different channels. User can click on an item, they can purchase an item, they can like it, they can share it, and they can do all these different sorts of interactions. And then um, the question is basically whether we can exploit these, uh, uh, what we call user channels uh, in order to improve the performance of recommender systems. So the answer of this question is actually we can do that. We proposed uh, a kind of data sampling method in order to uh, do some exploitation. So um, we proposed a method called uh, MFPPR. Uh, or uh, multi-feedback PPR. This is an extension to the well-known um, uh, learning to rank method uh, called BPR. And here we try to exploit uh, these uh, uh, types of feedback, these, these user channels via our extended sampling method. So uh, for the people who might not be familiar with how BPR works, actually, you probably see um, a lot of people in this conference uh, use BPR or at least compare their method with BPR. But BPR is actually a pairwise learning to rank method, which means that the model parameters are learned by finding the right order of any given items in a pair of items. So. Um, and of course, uh, we also need to have these pairs of uh, uh, positive and negative items in order to train the model. And what BPR does, um, since we have too many combinations of pair in a data set, what BPR does in order to make it possible to do the training, it actually uh, do some sampling on a data set in order to select a, a, a sample of um, uh, these pairs to do the uh, training. So. Um, uh, this sampling apparently is uh, quite important on performance and uh, convergence of SGD algorithm. There have been few works on improving the performance of BPR by improving the, uh, the sampling method, including, for example, the first uh, work here, which is done by, um, by the Rendell himself, the person who introduced BPR, and also some other works as well. But the main idea of all these works is actually just to improve the sampling, improving uh, uh, how to find those right pairs of items uh, using only single source of feedback. Whereas in this work, we actually try to exploit multiple types of positive feedback in order to improve the performance of our, um, our underlying model. So to quickly introduce uh, how our sampling method compared to standard BPR, so we have in uh, BPR these triples of uh, user positive and negative item. Uh, basically, these triples are used for training, and then in standard BPR, as you can see in this diagram, so we have positive part, the user and positive item, which are sampled from the positive feedback, and then we have a negative item, which is typically sampled from the items without any feedback. And then we actually assume that these uh, triples are um, uh, basically 
um, generated or sampled from a joint probability distribution that we introduced here, which can be actually further expanded to uh, uh, two uh, finer grain distributions that we call a positive pair sampler that samples U and I, and then negative item sampler that actually samples the negative item J. In contrast to the standard BPR, we have MFBPR. So we introduced this notion of levels for different types of feedback that specifies the importance or the strong uh, or uh, the, or the weakness or importance of different feedback types, um, and we assume that uh, we have a given order of uh, feedback uh, sorted by their importance. And then um, here, um, uh, since we have different feedback types. Um, so user preferences cannot, uh, so these uh, preferences, uh, I mean the pair of positive and negative item, cannot only be sampled from the positive feedback and unobserved data, as you see in the left part, but they can also sample from the uh, feedbacks uh, from lower level. Which means, for example, if you have a user uh, shares an item A, let's say, and then uh, he also, uh, for example, click uh, another item B. So given that share is an important signal compared to click, so we also have uh, these pairs for uh, item A and B in our training data in addition to what we have in the standard BPR. So these arrows here actually shows the direction of preferences. And for example, if I want to explain um, one of these um, uh, sampling phases, so you, we can have the, uh, the positive feedback from a low, uh, uh, higher level and negative feedback from a lower level. And then uh, we also introduced two uh, notions for the positive and the negative levels. And then here we assume that the data, the, these triples are uh, uh, sampled uh, from a joint probability distribution that also have positive and negative level in their parameters. So. Um, Similarly, we can uh, extend this to, to finer grain distributions. Uh, so in our paper, we actually define how these distributions are uh, basically um, um, defined. But uh, just, um, of course, you can find the details in the paper. Just quickly uh, to know what is the high level uh, difference between our distributions uh, with the standard BPR. Is that in the standard BPR, those are just uniform distribution over the data, whereas in our method, we also can have non-uniform samplers that takes into account the level or the importance of the feedback in order to do this sample method. So that's the main idea of uh, our, our method. Uh, talking about the experiments, so our algorithms uh, are tested in uh, a few data sets, including uh, these uh, two data sets. Uh, the Collect FM data set is actually a music uh, discovery platform. And here, the task is playlist recommendation. And if we have a Zinc data set, uh, which is a subset of uh, this year's Rexis challenge, here we have the uh, job recommendation. And in both uh, these data sets, we have multiple types of positive feedback. So we tried um, um, our method with fourfold cross-validation. And um, we actually tested these uh, uh, following four algorithms. We have standard BPR. We have uh, BPR dynamic, the improved version of sampling in BPR. And then we have two variations of our method, which we call BP MFBPR uni, uh, which basically have a, a uniform sampler uh, uh, for um, basically uh, that uh, distribution on the corner right, which is the negative item sampler. And then we have a uh, multi-level, which has a non-uniform sampler for that, which you can actually find the definitions in the paper. So um, here's the comparisons. Uh, so uh, in this graph, we have in the x-axis, uh, basically the ratio on unobserved sample. So this is uh, specifying how much of the data is basically sampled from the unobserved uh, um, item like the standard BPR, and in the uh, horizontal, uh, sorry, in the vertical axis, we have uh, our evaluation metric, which is MRR. So as you can see in uh, these graphs, in, in the Zing data set, in both variations, and in the uh, collective FM data set, uh, the multi-level variation, we actually perform better than, than the standard BPR, which is the red line, and then also the uh, BPR dynamic. Uh, however, um, 
Another interesting result here is that by increasing the unobserved sampling ratio, which means relying more on unobserved data as negative, uh, we actually get improved results, which is actually less expected uh, when we were doing this experiment. With, uh, so this actually kind of um, leads us to uh, our conclusion um, that I'm going to quickly uh, recap. So that uh, uh, basically considering the unobserved uh, data as negative is indeed uh, more informative than considering observed data, even with, uh, with uh, low-level uh, feedback uh, as negative. So this is uh, one of the interesting uh, findings that we have. And of course, uh, MFBPR uh, can perform, uh, can outperform uh, than standard BPR if we have multi-level uh, feedback. So for future work, we are considering to basically um, ha learning the true order of channels. So right now, we assume that these um, orders um, the fact that, for example, share is more important than a like or a click, so this is given, but we can also have that uh, learn in a model. And then uh, the other work that uh, we can do as, as an extension is to basically try other um, uh, learning to rank methods, for example, least-wise learning to rank method, in order to exploit these multiple positive feedbacks. So uh, thank you for, for your attention. Uh, so uh, the source code of uh, this uh, project this paper uh, for the public data set is also available as, um, in GitHub as a part of this uh, toolkit that uh, I developed uh, called Raprex, so you can also check that if you're interested in that. Thank you. Thanks, Babak, for the great talk. Um, questions there? Um, thanks for the great talk, Evgeny from Skoltech. Um, uh, so with, with BPR, you kind of rank all the pairs, even though in the end you recommend uh, some top N items, so you basically do not care about the ranking of the items that will not be in your top N recommendations. So, and well, again, that taking into, uh, into account that that's the ratio is, like, it's, uh, it's a really small amount of all the items. Have you considered to improve the performance of, of the algorithm by kind of trying to reduce how you learn, like to, like if there are items that have really, like they are basically of low interest for like all users, so you don't, don't bother like ranking them in your model? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, if I understand your question correctly, you're talking more about and uh, taking into account the items that are more important or they have more import, uh, more feedback, yeah, which or, means or, more or less you are taking into uh, talking about popularity of the item. And actually, yes, we uh, considered that. So if you check our paper, we have uh, um, finer grain definition for the distribution that in fact takes into account the popularity of, of the items as well, which kind of uh, um, ans uh, can answer uh, what you have in your mind. Yeah, well, not, maybe not, not taking the popularity into account, but like avoiding non-popular, not, not taking them into account. So the, yeah, to I avoid mean, what, what we have actually in this paper that like you have those joint probability distributions, so you can actually uh, just define them differently. Uh, for example, by pushing more um, or giving higher priority to uh, um, long tail items. So that's also possible. I mean, this is just how you define those distributions. Any more questions? I have a question. Do you have any um, intuition as to how to learn the relative importance of the feedback? Uh, you mentioned this is some kind of future work you're planning to do. Um, you mean the order of the... Cha uh, the order or... Yeah, what, what, one of the things that we have in our mind, I mean, we did some prelim, uh, primary experiments, uh, but it didn't work, so was to basically uh, try to uh, use the, uh, the channel type as a parameter in the uh, loss function in order to learn the correct order and we update the priority of the channels by iterations. But actually we noticed that um, it causes some um, overfitting to uh, or pushing too much high uh, one particular channel, so, which actually probably means to do some study on how to uh, do some regularization, but that's something that we're probably going to do uh, later. Thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker.